It's all right. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, ooh, that's bad. Let's try to. Who can hear it? Who can hear it? Can you hear the ringing? Wow. Really? Oh, okay. True. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for coming back out tonight. Um, let's see. Got a couple. We got any housekeeping matters? Um, I guess not. We, um, we, have a, we have a welcome table out front now with a sign that, huh? Yeah, so, so now we're going to put out until we, because it's kind of a question mark of where, like when first time guests come, where do they enter? They enter here or over there? Um, and so we're, we're thinking here, so we have like an A-frame sign with a, a temporary sign that points people this way, and Henry manned that today, and uh, so appreciative of that. And just to try to help, so we'll, anyway, so that's kind of cool. Um, anything else going on? The, um, if you notice in your bulletin, blue, uh, blue Sunday, um, what's that? So, so that, that is basically um, an awareness Sunday of, without getting too graphic, just the children that have undergone some, They've been through some really bad situations, okay, like abuse type situations, and um, and we have, um, I mean, we that's in our church, right? And so we we just want to honor that, um, that because that's a very important ministry to those kids, and so that that will on on the twenty eighth. That's why it's called Blue Sunday, so. And we'll just have a special time of prayer for, for those kids and things like that. Brother Jim, good to see you back. Glad you're feeling better. Yes, sir. All right, well, tonight we're going to finish up our uh, book. Well, our kind of study through this book of, um, did I bring it? Of evangelism and the sovereignty of God. All right. And we've had four lessons and uh, tonight, basically, the whole, the whole thing tonight is just things to keep in mind regarding evangelism, okay, about evangelism. And uh, most of the things are from, from the book here. So, anyway, I hope, I hope it'll be good, good conversations for us. So let's, let's start out in prayer. Lord God, thank you for the stay. Thank you for these saints. Uh, may we um, just think about the things of you and have good conversations as we strive to get better at sharing our faith with those around us. We love you, God, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, when we get to the part about, I don't want to spoil it. When we get to the part at the end about prayer, remind me to tell you, if I forget, remind me to tell you, a story the youth just told me, okay? And because I was telling them to pray about this situation, but it's kind of funny. So, huh? What? No, does anybody? Yeah, no. Yes, anyway, anybody. <laughs> all right, so well, number one, all right, and again, these are things to keep in mind about evangelism. Number one, the belief that God is sovereign does not affect the necessity of, of evangelism. The belief that God is sovereign does not affect the necessity of evangelism. Okay? And this is some, some points that uh, Packer laid out. Evangelism is necessary because no one can be saved without the gospel. Right? We know that. Evangelism works within the sovereignty and providence of God. So he has his elect. Right? That's a Bible word, so that can't throw us off. He has his elect, and yet his elect are saved, right, through, through our work, you know, um, our, our work of evangelism. Uh, we are vital links in the chain for bringing the gospel to God's elect, okay? So turn to Romans chapter 10, verses 13 through 15.
And these are, this is just a great chapter. I mean, especially if you're sharing the, your faith with somebody and you're like, well, hey, what, how can I be saved? Well, Romans 10, 9 and 10, the Roman road. You're not, one of the things of the Roman, of the Roman road. Uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Then verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then Paul kind of uh, launches into a, uh, some questions to think about. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. All right? So, in other words, I mean, God has his elect, but yet we, in his sovereignty and his providence, we, we make the name of Jesus known and people believe, right? But they have to know about Jesus to be saved, okay? No one is saved apart from Christ. That's, that's just very, very clear. And so, uh, the, the belief in God's sovereignty in no way affects the necessity of, of, of evangelism, of sharing our faith. Does that make sense? Any thoughts, questions on that? Okay, number two. The belief that God is sovereign does not affect the urgency of evangelism. Okay? We can't be lackadaisical. The belief that God is sovereign does not affect the urgency of evangelism. So, um, Luke 13, verse 3 um, you know, this is in the context of, you know, people thinking, you know, these people died because they were wicked, right? And, um, and so they're alive because they're righteous. And so Jesus says, no, I tell you, unless, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So, there, so that you can kind of read from that, there's some urgency with evangelism, right? That that's what, without Christ, that's what people are facing. They will perish, all right, um, we are to share with urgency to everyone, and this is key. We are not, and we've talked about this before, but we are not to worry whether someone is God's elect or not. That is not our business. We share, and God's elect will be saved at some point. Maybe not right then when we share, but at some point they will be. Our calling as Christian, see, I didn't proofread this, you can tell. Our calling as a Christian is to, is, oh my, I really messed that up. Right in there, our calling as a Christian is not, is not, right in there please, is not to only love God's elect, but it's to love our neighbor whether they be elect or not. Okay? So, sorry for that. Our calling as a Christian is not to only love God's elect or look for the people we might think that will be saved. No, we love, we love everyone whether they be elect or not, because that's not our business, okay? So we share with everyone. Thoughts, questions on that? Yeah. Yep, that's right. Yeah, so sometimes we have to um, convince someone, and this is really hard, convince someone they're lost, right? Anytime you witness somebody, you have to make sure that they understand their sinners before you can get any That's right. So, so one thing I like about what, um, about what uh, Ray Comfort does, and Nelson, I'll, I'll come back to you, I'm sorry. But... Um, so Ray Comfort, we talked about him before. Great YouTube videos, highly recommend them. But he, he'll meet um, he'll meet people on the street, and it's like, hey, have you been born again? And several of them will be like, well, I'm Catholic, <laughs> and so and like, so we don't do that. And he's like, what? You, I mean, Jesus literally said in the Bible, you must be born again. So I mean, that's something a Catholic should embrace, right? And um, but. Um, and so then what does he do? He, he goes through the Ten Commandments to show them 
that they are sinners in need of salvation and need to be born again, right? And so, um, but yeah, you're right, Brother Doug, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And yeah, well, you jumped ahead, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we like to do that. That's cool. Yeah. That's right. Right. Wow. That's cool. That's good. Yeah. Sure. Mm hmm. Cool. We're good. All right, number three. Um, God's sovereignty and salvation does not impact the invitation for everyone to believe the gospel. All right? So we'll, we will, well, all right. Let's read Acts 17, 30 through 31. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which, we will, on what, on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Okay, so... Uh, J.I. Packer's point with this statement is that the gospel is for sinners universally. Okay? It is not for only sinners of a certain type. All people in all places are invited slash commanded to believe. Okay? So, uh, again, and that kind of ties into, it's not our job to figure out, okay, is this, is this person going to be saved? Is, I mean, that's just, not, it's just, that's just not what we're supposed to do. We are to... Extend the invitation to all sinners, right, to believe. Trusting God is, is going to call those to be saved, okay? Number four, and this is mine, all right? But he kind of said, said something very similar. But number four, God's sovereignty and salvation does not mean that there will be those in hell who wanted to be saved, but couldn't. And it does not mean that there will be those in heaven who are confused about how they got there. Does that make sense? So, because some people, when you start talking about election, predestination, they get all really fired up, and they say, well, you know, does that mean um, if somebody, you know, if they're not elect, then that, you know, how how do they put it? They, They worry like, well, that there's going to be somebody that wants to be saved, but they're not elect. But that's not how this works, okay? Um, The person who is not elect will not want to be saved. Does that make sense? So I wrote here, mankind in its sin does not want to believe. And that is why God must give us a new heart so that we will believe. God gives people, and this is from Packer, God gives people what they desire, choose. If they have chosen death, they will receive death. If they've chosen life, they will receive life. God's sovereignty is consistent with a person's decision. Okay? And so again, just because God is sovereign in salvation, right? Chosen us before the foundations of the earth... It does not mean that there's those in hell who's like, oh, I wish I could have been saved, but I wasn't elect. There's not going to be anybody in heaven that says, hey, I was an atheist. How did I end up here? No. Right? That's not how that works. The person who wants to be saved will be, right? And the person who does not want to be saved will not be. And yet it's all all consistent with God's sovereign election. Thoughts on that? What? That's right. That's true too. Yes. And that, and that's what I mean by his his sovereignty works within our 
Our decisions, our desires, yeah. You will not, that is so true, you will not, mankind in its sin does not want to believe. God must give him a new heart, okay? And that's why, and I think we talk about this a little bit later, but that's why you can't argue somebody into salvation. It doesn't matter, you can give the greatest apologetics, like I was listening to uh, my favorite podcast, and they're talking about different evidences of the resurrection, but really, like those evidences and apologetics, that's really for us. That, that encourages us because we're already saved. It might get a non-believer to think a little bit, but they will, they will come up with any excuse in the world not to believe in his resurrection because they don't want to believe in his resurrection, you see. Um, I mean, I think um, I heard one time, like, the best theory to explain the resurrection from a secular point of view is that Jesus had a twin brother that just happened to walk in to Jerusalem right after Jesus was crucified <laughs> yeah. to, to explain the resurrection appearances. Uh, and again, because they will believe in anything, right? Um, so, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, where was, where was Mary? Uh, well, in other things, I mean, because this is all the rage now, um, um, people doing drugs and trying to have an experience with um, spiritual beings of some kind. Uh, one of the fascinating details of those experiences, which are demonic, by the way, um, is that they will say things like, well, Jesus, uh, because they think they're talking to a being across the galaxy, right? Or, or in another galaxy across the universe. And they'll usually say things like, well, Jesus was one of us, right? He was an alien like one of us. Again, that shows you people will, they'll believe anything before they believe the truth. When I was in college, there was a debate. They actually, you know, these fun, these different debate stuff. And one of them was actually resolved that if Jesus were alive today, he'd be a hippie. A hippie? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and yeah, we, we keep talking about that, but, um, but yes. So, but God, so God's sovereignty and our desires, they're, they're not opposed to one another, right? And, and yes, Nelson's right. God must, he must give us, and I wrote that down, he must give us a new heart so that we will believe, so that we do desire him. And, and the person that, well, we'll we've, we will belabor that point. We'll move on. All right, number five. God's sovereignty and salvation gives us hope for success in evangelism. Uh, and we've already talked about this, uh, but, you know, the Great Commission, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples. <clears throat> Jesus has all authority. He says, go win the nations. We go win the nations. All right? Knowing that God is sovereign, that he's got people all over the world that's going to be saved, gives us confidence. A belief in God's sovereignty does not diminish the success of evangelism. Rather, God's sovereignty gives us confidence that our evangelism will be successful. And, and this is kind of battling like, well, if God is sovereign... Um, and he has his elect, then, then why even... Then it's like they, they somehow think this is going to diminish the number of people being saved, right? Or, the, or, the, or the diminish our success. But, but that's not the case. Rather, it gives us confidence that our mission will be successful. Because if God was not in control, it was up to us, not many people would be saved, right? I mean, that goes back to the... And I've, I've said this before, but... The, the old song, you may be the only Jesus someone ever sees. And if, if that's true of me, then there's a lot of people going to hell, right? Because I'm, I'm not a perfect representation. And it's a, it's a good song. It's, it's thought, thought-provoking. But um, if it's up to us, people are in trouble. That's right. That's right. He, he, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's so... Yeah, that's right. He has chosen to use us to bring about his purposes. Amen. Good thought. I also believe, though, that, that he prepares people's hearts to receive 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, that, that goes back to our final point about prayer. So, yeah, good. Yeah, God does prepare hearts. All right, so, yeah, I wrote, it's not up to us. We can't convert anyone. Um, if it was only up to us to convince people to believe, then we would not be confident. But we can, but we can, what? I don't know. I, again, I didn't proofread this. I got busy. We can trust God with the results. I know that. And know that our efforts will be successful. Okay. All right, thoughts on that? All right, other good reminders. So these are, this is kind of a, a hodgepodge of things. All right, number one, certain evangelistic techniques do not guarantee conversions, All right? The, these reminders are to help us not become discouraged. Okay, that's, what the, that's the purpose of these reminders. Certain evangelistic techniques do not guarantee conversions. So there's several good evangelism training programs. We've talked about those, like evangelism explosion, faith, the things that maybe you've done, right? But, but a program will not guarantee salvations, all right? Yeah. That's right, yeah. So, so, so again, this is so we don't become discouraged. So, you know, every once in a while you'll see some guy wanting to make some money, which is fine, you know, it's good to make money, and he'll come up with this new program of evangelism, and they sell it to all the churches, all the churches buy it, and, and it's like, oh, this is going to solve our problems, and it doesn't, right? Because a program, technique, it's, it does not guarantee conversions. Number two, when we share the gospel and the person does not believe, we need to remember it is not our fault, okay? Assuming that we, we shared it well, okay? That's an assumption we're making here. This person is still dead in their sins, and unless their heart is changed, then they will not believe. God must open their eyes and ears to the truth, right? So... Well, that go, I'm not going to jump ahead, but that goes into point three. But yeah, it's, if we share, and we share to the best of our ability, explaining the gospel, we're a sinner, right? You're a sinner, you need to be saved. What did Jesus do for you? He died on the cross, pay for your sins, right? We go through all those things, and they don't believe it's not our fault, right? Just like we said, they're dead in their sins, they don't want to believe, and they're not going to want to believe until their heart is changed, until God opens their eyes and ears. Number three, I think we already kind of said this, we'll say it again. We are called to be faithful in sharing. We are not called to be successful, right? <laughs> that's, that's kind of, I mean, we all want to be successful, but not all of us will be. But we are all called to be faithful in sharing. We can all share. But there will be certain people who will share, and they will see many people saved. Billy Graham. That was his gifting, right? Probably a lot of false conversions there too, but, but I mean, I've, I've met plenty of people. Uh, there was a guy at the former church. He's with the Lord now. Uh, Alex, I don't think you ever met him. We got married after he died. But uh, great guy, great guy. Uh, Arnold was his name. And... Um, he, uh, he looked like John Wayne. Like he had a, a photo of him in his house or like a, I think a portrait of some kind, like a painting. And he looked just like John Wayne. Anyway, um, but he went to Vietnam and fought in Vietnam and his wife left him when he was in Vietnam. And so he came back to the States. He was a drunk. He was depressed. And he turned on the TV. He, he watched Billy Graham. God saved him. His first prayer was this, God, can I marry a woman with a bunch of kids? Miss Edna shows up in his town. I don't know how it all works out. I think with four or five kids, her husband, I think, had left her. They get married. Isn't that cool? But, but his life was changed, right? And they ended up becoming, I think, like North American missionaries. Uh, they would travel in their RV and do different missions projects together in their retirement years, and, uh, but Billy Graham, right? So, 
Anyway, uh, Alex and I, we, we know a guy from Lufkin named uh, Cecilio, spent time in prison, and he was saved, and God has given him the gift of evangelism. All right? So when he shares, people get saved. Um, I, think we list, I think I listened to an R.C. Sproul sermon about, about how, like, he, you know, he's a great teacher, great Bible expositor, explains it. But he said, you know, I don't, I don't have that gift of evangelism. So anyway, there's people that have this gift, and, and they're going to be quite successful. But again, we're just called to be faithful. And we can, I, like, and I, this, I wrote this, we can at least help prepare the ground for the one who is gifted in evangelism. Planting seeds, right? Conversations we have that somebody else can then say things in another way and they connect the dots because God's gifted them to do that, right? And we're just like, we just have to cheer them on, right? We must, number four, we must place all of our hope for fruit in evangelism on the sovereign and omnipotent grace of God. And this is from Packer, right? We trust him with the results. Thoughts on, it, on any of these four things? <laughs> oh, no, oh, Amber's being difficult. Yeah. Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't call the equipped, he equips the call. Amen, I like that. That's good. Amen, thank you. I'm going to repeat that for the video. So, yeah, I wrote down, it's not our fault. If we share, we share well, and they, and they don't believe. Uh, and, but if they do believe, it's still not our credit, right? We don't get the credit for it. It's all of God. That's great, yeah. Uh, Romans 9, 15 and 16, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends, it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. We can prepare ourselves, learn a specific method, practice sharing our faith with scammers who call us. That's what I do, all right? But the fruit will come when God brings it. Um, yeah, so if you're, on, if you're on Facebook or you're friends of mine or whatever, you, you, saw, you saw this. But one day I was at the church. This guy called, and, and like I answered. I like answering unknown numbers. I think it's fun. All right? I know most people don't do that, but I'm strange like that. I like to do that. And this this guy. He tells me, like, I won a bunch of money with the, the publishing clearinghouse contest. And um, anyway, and so, of course, I'm, I'm on the phone with him. I, I look it up. I'm like, you know, okay, this is a scam. And, but, and he tells me to write down all these numbers. And I don't know why. Like, I've not given him any information, right? But he tells me to write them down, to write down my name. And then he wants me to read it back to him, which, that, you know, I don't know if he's trying to steal my voice. I don't, I don't know the play. It's, it's, or maybe just build a false sense of security. I really don't know. But, but I didn't read them back to him. And so, and then, oh, so, so he asked me, he's like, man, how does it feel to win $3 million? And I'm just like, and I say, it's hard to believe, you know, I mean, you know anyway. Uh, but anyway, so we get to the, the point I'm supposed to read the stuff back to him. And I was like, man, I got some good news for you. And it gets kind of quiet. I, and so, and I was like, hey, I'm a Christian. And I just want to tell you, and then he interrupts me. He's like, oh, everyone's a Christian. I was like, no, man, you're, you're not a Christian, right? You're a scammer. You're trying to steal. But I have good news for you, right? And so, he, you know, and, and I'll say a few more things, and he hangs up the phone. But, right, but this is why I do this. I, I do this, one, it's good practice with someone who's probably not going to believe, but you never know, right? It plants that seed. It bothers them. I waste their time so they can't scam somebody else, right? But, I, but it's good practice. So, I think it's good practice to succinctly share the gospel um, for those times that the, the ground is much more ready for us, right? Okay, uh, number five, there are two types of calls for people to be saved. There is a general call that goes out to everyone, so you think like invitations, Sunday morning, right? 
And then there is the effectual calling. Effectual mean, meaning it's effective, right? Effectual calling is when a sinner hears the gospel, God works in his heart so that he responds to the gospel and is saved. In other words, this is a calling that is effective and it produces salvation. God gives the person a new heart, frees them from the power of sin, and leads them to turn to Jesus Christ for salvation. Okay, where do we get that from? Romans 8, 29 and 30. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. And so if we are saved in that effectual call that's come upon us, you can remember where you were, right, when, you, when God saved you. Um, I mean, it, and you felt that call. And it was effective because you believed. And you're here now and you believe, right? Um, what do we say about the people that they responded to an invitation and they've fallen away, they don't believe, they're atheists? They just responded to that, genu- ge- that general call. The, the effectual call of salvation wasn't there. Right? At least not yet. Okay? But when God calls his elect to salvation, they believe and are saved. I didn't put it, but I'll say it. It's irresistible. Right? Anyway. All right. Thoughts on that? There we go. Got sound effects. <laughs> God changes your desires, so you want you want to choose Him. Yeah, all of that. So and and so, uh, Jonathan Edwards has a book. Uh, I think it's called "The Bondage of the Will," and that basically, like, un- until God changes our desires, the only thing that we're going to want to do is sin, right? And then, but then, but when God begins to work on us, that that's when our desires start to change. You see, I think it's the bondage of the will that that we are. Let's see if I can say this correctly. Um, we're not we're not robots. We have we have a will, but that will and that that unregenerate will will always choose sin. But a regenerate will will then choose God, so to speak. Does that make sense? Anyway. All right. Uh, man, where's Brother Keith? We're going to finish early tonight. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Well, no, they pointed at you. Yeah. Yeah, that was your, your cheering section. Yeah. Amen. 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 Absolutely. All right. Uh, Final thoughts. Um, I did not put this down, but I should have. Okay. This, this always help. This always helps me when, when we think about these difficult issues of like what we're talking about tonight, God's sovereignty and all these things, Right. Usually when people think of God's elect, God's sovereign in salvation, we, we tend to think that just only a few people are going to be saved. But that's not necessarily true, right? God may have elected many, many, many people to be saved. And we can talk more about that later, but I just want to put that out there, all right? Other th- so the final thoughts about evangelism. God's sovereignty 
makes us bold, right? We don't have to be ashamed. We don't have to fear. We are not on a fool's errand. We're not car salesmen. We have a wonderful message the world needs to hear. Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Number two, we need to be patient. God saves people in his own time. Evangelism is a work that does not usually have quick results. And he said this, and I really, this really spoke to me when I read it. The majority of people are not going to be converted by one conversation or by one church service. It takes time. We must be patient. Thoughts on that? And, and kind of like what you brought up, Brother Doug, sometimes it's the work of convincing someone that, that they're not in Christ, really, if they're relying on whatever. Yeah, if they're relying on some kind of infant baptism or um, their good works or whatever. Yeah, that's good. That's right. Yeah, for sure. Yep. It takes time. We must be patient. Any thoughts on that? Okay, yeah, please. Gripped your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think I think that's a great way to think about it because we really overcomplicate this too. But when it grips us, uh, just I mean, just like I mean, we all were talking about Caitlin Clark, right? <laughs> like with Iowa, great basketball player, because she was she gripped us, right? I mean, we never saw a, a girl shoot from the half court and make it, right? I mean. Uh, and, and that's the same thing, like when we, when, when God's word grips us, oh, we, yeah, you're right, we want to talk about it, and, and, um, and we want to share. That's good. But yes, but as we share, we have to remember to be patient. It takes a, for some people, it takes a long time. Um, breaking bad habits, we, you know, in the coaching world, we have to do that, Right? Miss Doris, you know that. You get some girls with bad habits. You've got to break those bad habits before you can teach them the truth. Um, any more thoughts on that? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. To get it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah, that call was effective. Just took a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's, that happens to a lot of people. I mean, yeah. Mm. 
Man. <laughs> no, not, yeah. not you, Amber. <laughs> so who was, who was, sorry, who was saved first between Nelson? Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Like I didn't want to stay there because I didn't Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they laid the groundwork until the finally the the dam broke, yeah wow, that's cool, Alex. How long did it take you from hearing until you truly believed okay it's still a good while, right, not ten, but still. And this, and you were going to church during the six months to a year, or to Mike's church. So, yeah. 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 Well, that, that's encouraging for us to hear both those testimonies. Thank you, ladies. Um, and that, that goes right into number three, because I'm sure... This is true for both of y'all. Um, people were praying for you, right? So we, we need to be prayerful. And this, this hit me pretty hard, all right? And so um, we, we, just, we have youth in our church who need to be saved. Uh, one doesn't think he's savable, right? Um, um, you know, we, we've had some adults kind of come through that, that need to be saved, and, um, and so I'm trying to pray, and we all need to pray for them, all right? So this is so interesting. Without prayer, we're not going to see conversions. That's what Packer says. God will make us pray for salvations before he blesses our labors with salvation. Why? So that we will constantly depend on him. And when this happens, right, when he gives the salvations, we will not be tempted to think, that these conversions happen because of our own gifts or skills, but to his work alone. So we must pray for salvations. So the story that I, I just reminded myself in, in our youth class, um, they were telling me, ah, yeah, I guess I'll, nobody watches this. So not, I mean, apart from our church, but anyway. There, apparently there's some kids at Orangefield that... Um, I think the school banned it, but they were wearing a tail. They were identifying as a fox or a cat. Like that, I mean, that, I mean it's just, so I, so I did a little exercise with the kids. It's like, okay, why are they doing those things? And it took them a little bit, but, but we got down to, because they're lost, they're in their sin. As we said this morning, sin is foolishness, right? And I said, so here's what you need to do. Um, you know, you need to start praying for this person. Because if you just invite that person to church, probably not going to come. Start praying. God in his sovereignty, using us, right? Even using our prayers to lay the groundwork. Soften their hearts. They come, right? Pray, maybe for a long time. Be impatient. And eventually that person may be saved. Right? And, uh, but we have to pray. And it's just, I don't know, it, it's kind of like, I don't know, I just, this just really struck me that, that God wants, he, he wants us to be faithful 
and wants us to do these things so that he and his sovereignty will bring about the fruit. Prayer, sharing our faith, and things like that. Not up to us, but yet he's using us to accomplish his will that he ordained for the world. Man, it's amazing. It's mind-boggling. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was always fun um, when kids would, would come. Yeah, no, I, it, I mean, that's what I, I mean. I told our kids, I was like, yeah, it's, you have to be a light. Like, we're not, we're not going to tuck tail and run. Those kids need Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Not even Fox <laughs> That's good. That's funny. Anyway, but, but guys, I mean, and as I told the youth, yeah, that's that's true. No tails on a podcast. <laughs> yes, and and that's what I think your son even said that. But I said, but why do they want that attention? And, that's right. There's an insecurity. They need that attention, but then we drill down that it's because they don't. They have a they have a hole. Here that needs to be filled. Yeah. And so, that's right. A God-shaped hole that he, only he can fill, right? And so, so we pray, we pray. And so, yeah, the point was not to, to criticize the school or, or to criticize that person, but just to pray, to pray, to pray for salvations, especially for our youth, uh, for that young man who doesn't think he's savable, Okay. Um, others connected to our church, we've got to pray. If we pray, pray faithfully, I think we'll see God bring salvations. So, any last thoughts? Any questions? Yes, ma'am, please. Yeah, God will make us pray for salvations before he blesses us with our labors with salvation. Well, we have to pray. You can, you can rephrase it like that. Just, just, well, what, yeah, don't read it like that. I'm just saying that um, for us to see salvations, we have to pray. That's what I mean by that statement. Yeah. Just that he, he, he requires it. That's a better way to say it. Yeah. 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 That's right. So we know that, the, that when we see salvations, we're not doing these things on our own. It makes us depend on him. Right. Mm-hmm. Pray for those divine appointments. Yep. Oh, amen. Expect them. Anything else? Um, we'll probably do another, we may do a more practical book next, and, um, but next week we have business meetings, so we'll, we'll, uh, take a little break from this, but, um, like a practical book on, more practicalities on evangelism, because we talked a lot of theology to kind of lay the groundwork, and so maybe I'll try to find a more practical thing and give us, give us some hints, um, um, anyway. All right, let's pray. We'll be dismissed. Lord God, thank you so much for 
these saints. May they be faithful to you, walk in wisdom, obey your commands, make the best use of the time. And God, may they faithfully share, trusting you in your sovereignty for the results. And God, may you remind us each and every day to pray for the people around us who need to be saved. And then God, may you absolutely bring salvations and <laughs> because we're being faithful in our prayers. We love you, God, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.